hello and welcome to Keto Homestead with Jess. We've got Ghost Prepper here as a guest to keep me company on my live as I do some dehydration. We are going to do some chives. I just cut them down in the garden. Ghost, have you ever done chives before? Nope. I've never dehydrated anything before either. Nothing. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So what I do is I just go ahead and give my chives a haircut and I cut them down to about two inches. Um, they'll regrow. They come back every single year and you can cut them all the way through summertime. So it's an abundance of chives that you can store uh, for your pantry. And so we'll go ahead and get started. I disinfected my sink and I put some cool water in there and I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar about a tablespoon and what that will do is just kill off any bugs or ants or anything that may be in there so I'll go ahead and just soak that now as you're doing this if you see any brown spots in your chives like the tips sometimes will turn brown Hopefully you can see that. Um, and you can just cut those pieces off. Just like in any canning, you want the best of the best to dehydrate. Just like you do in canning, you want to pick the best produce to do the uh, canning or putting away. I'm going to grab a bowl. If you want to, you can talk to the chat, welcome people in, since I can't really see what's going on. We've got the Milkmaid, Monty, Van Life with Gina, Stars Prepper, the Big Blue House Homestead. Virginia Roots is here. What's going on? Hey, Virginia. we got like the whole Cannon crew here. Awesome. Van will be here in a minute. Lexi Ann LeBeau. Did I pronounce that right? LeBeau or LeBeau? I don't know. Sounds like the F should be silent. It looks like the F should be silent. LeBeau? LeBeau? I don't hey. know. Just say Lexi. Hey, Lexi. <laughs> cool name. Cool name. Your way. Let's see. Today is my birthday. And for my birthday, I went and got two more rabbits. Awesome. Were they uh, does or... Bucks. I got a buck and a doe. Awesome. So they're both um, full blood New Zealand whites. We've got Emily popping up. Hello, Emily. Welcome to my stream. Hello, um, New Zealand white. Joe Morgan. Hello, Joe Morgan. Hello, Emily. Well, Emily, you got your YouTube muted. Uh, hang on. Yes. Oh, it's pronounced LaBeouf. Oh, okay. I like that, LaBeouf. That's pretty cool. All right, so these don't have to soak very long. You just pull them out, and then you'll cut them down. As I was washing them, I was also trimming all the brown pieces off. And the best way I like to do this is just cut them all together. Um, I don't have any nifty herb scissors so you can just use regular scissors if you want but if you have herb scissors it would make it a lot easier um, herb scissors are just basically two pairs of scissors put together and makes a really fine chop but it works this way and sorry traffic is starting to pick up if you just cut it like this why they're fresh it'll be easier than trying to cut them when they're dry it's a lot harder uh, the milkmaid says what am i 29 uh no not quite 29. a little bit more season than that hey uh 52. so happy birthday ghost That's Why, awesome. thank, you. Thank, thank you you're welcome so how many rabbits does that make it now? Six. Awesome. Six. I've got two bucks and four does, and they're from three different, um, completely separate genealogies. Good job. Uh, my three, three of my does are litter mates. 
but they'll be spread between the two separate bucks that are from two different localities. So I've got plenty of fresh jeans. Plus, this guy down the street, he lives literally three and a half miles from me. I just found him on Facebook today. It blew me away when I got to his homestead. He probably has 200 rabbits. Wow. And he's got probably 400 chickens. Um, and he's got one, two, three, four, five, six livestock guardian dogs. Um, he breeds and sells everything. That's awesome. But he's got um, New Zealand's. He's got Californians. He's got um, Champagne de Argents and Silver Foxes. He's got all the kind of rabbits that I want to get. So I'm going back probably in a few months and get. Um, I'm going to get a, a buck and a doe from uh, either Silver Fox or Champagne. Now remind me, you bought the... Um New Zealand, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. I've got all New Zealand and Californians. Okay. I thought, okay, I thought you were sticking with the New Zealands. Um, I have Californians. I don't have any New Zealands. Oh. Just, just the, my, my main buck is a New Zealand brown. And then the two white ones that I got today are full-blood New Zealands. And then my three does that I got when I got the big buck they're from the same litter. And they're New Zealand, California crosses. Well, you're going to have some really pretty litters. Yeah, I hope so. Especially that light gray one, uh, Za, the rabbit, the Za name. Uh, yeah. The gray and white one, she's going to make some really pretty babies. Mm -hmm. Now, um, later on, when you get into like full fledged into the meat rabbits and stuff, are you going to be learning to be in hides or do you know how to do that? Or? Yeah, that's, that's why I'm going to get the. Um, the champagnes and the silver foxes because they're good for hides. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about the silver fox, if that's why you were getting it. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And um, just to let everybody know, these chives, they are onions. They will burn your eyes. I don't know if you can tell, but I am definitely crying and have tears streaming down my face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monty, the best rabbit for me that I've come across and it's, it's a, it's a toss-up between the um, New Zealand's and the California crosses. Most people say that New Zealand is the best because they grow the fastest. And I mean, they're that from birth to uh, butcher day is somewhere between 12 to 14 weeks. They're be around five pounds on the bone. So you're, you're going to get the most meat for your input with the New Zealand's or the Californians um, at 12 to 14 weeks. All right, so you want to know a crazy fact? You that. know those, um, oh, what are they called? The Flemish, the giant Flemish rabbits. Yeah. Um, I when I first started getting into meat rabbits, I thought about getting into the the Flemish, and people around here were like, "But you don't eat those for me." Well, a couple months ago, I was talking to another YouTuber from New England. That that's the only thing that are their meat rabbits are the Flemish, and I'm like, wow. Okay. Well, the, thing about, the thing about Flemish giants, it's kind of misleading. It's a beautiful rabbit. I want one just to have it. I may have one as a house pet. The Flemish giants because they're massive, uh -huh. but the problem is the meat to bone ratio is crap. Oh. Uh -huh. Big rabbits, their bones are so big, and so like, and it costs a lot more to, to feed them to breed them out. Now with a with a um, a litter of 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 New Zealand's, I can I can start a fresh bag of food, a fifty pound bag of food that costs between fifteen and eighteen dollars. I can start a fresh bag of food the day that I breed the mama doe and just feed her and her kits from that bag. And I will at the end of the twelve weeks, I will I may have opened up another bag, but I'm gonna feed them a lot of grass too. Um, so I could feed them all for their entire grow out for that fifteen dollars. And if I sell one rabbit from the litter it paid for the food. So basically they pay for themselves with the Flemish giant to grow it out. Of, I mean, now you can grow the New Zealand's bigger. I mean, they get, you know, 12, 13, 14 pounds, but the perfect time is 12 to 14 weeks because then you got a five pound rabbit and you're getting at least for around two and a half to three pounds of meat. And that, that ratio is just awesome. That's like the perfect time to, to butcher them. Okay. Well, that's good to know too. 
I uh, Lexi says I have blemish giant. He is the sweetest. He is a pet though. Yeah. That's what I think I'm gonna get one for. Okay, so the next step we're done washing and cutting all of this. This is super simple. Um, anybody can do it. And the great thing about doing this on the live and being interactive with everybody is it gives you that push and that motivation to get it done. So I find like being on Ghost Preppers um, canning lives, that gives me um, inspiration, motivation to get my canning done and doing lives like the tinctures or the dehydration that I do for you all. It just motivates me to get this long-term storage done. So I hope it also inspires you all to do it too. So with these um, chives, all you do is, we'll start with the bottom. You um, just lightly spread these chives all over your trays. Hey, Ark Wild Man. Hey, Ark Wild Man. Thanks for coming Tiger. in. Tiger 454. Four. And you just want to do a thin layer. And this typically will take... I'm going to go ahead and set this on the lowest setting, which is 95 degrees. Um, some people will suggest you can go all the way up to 125, but I personally suggest to do the lowest setting that you have on your dehydrator because the higher you go, the more of the nutrients and vitamins that are going to heat out of there. So the lower and slower you can go on this, the better. And you just continue filling your trays as you go. And this, um, hey. it, um, you have to keep an eye on it because the weather in each state will um, differentiate and also the humidity levels in every okay. state will differ. So anywhere between four, um, anywhere between two to eight hours. So at the two hour mark is when I'll check them. Um, and see where they're at and typically it takes me about four hours but like I said some people it takes eight hours or longer so it just depends and the way that you can tell when you dehydrate something if it's done you don't want any slack there you don't want any bend at all if it breaks clean in half you know it's done um, and you really want to be careful about that because if you store in a jar like I do, I store most of my herbs in mason jars. And if you go to store something that you've dehydrated and it's not completely dried out, it will create moisture and mold and you'll have to just throw it all away. So all your time was wasted. Terry's got a good question. She asked, can you do this in the oven? Yes, you can. Um, again, the rule would be to set it at the very lowest setting. And I personally, before I had a dehydrator, when I did it, I would crack my oven door as well. Um, so it wouldn't get too heated in there. But you can do it. You just got to keep a closer eye, obviously, because it's an oven. Got it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this lid on. And I will turn this on here in a little bit. I'm not going to turn it on now on the live. But like I said, I have it on the lowest setting, 95 degrees. And this will take anywhere from two to eight hours. And after this live, I'll go ahead and turn it on. But it is pretty noisy. And I don't want you guys to have to um, hear that. So, but. Rolling home, dead wild animals in Wisconsin. Well, Mark. Hey, Mark, how's it going? So, I just want to let everybody know in the chat that um, Ghost has been like a great inspiration and friend in my life, and I really appreciate him. I met him over at Prepper Tribe. He was on the panel, and I had just met Prepper Tribe maybe two weeks before Ghost popped up on the panel. So, I had popped up on the panel as well, and we got to talking, and we clicked pretty quick you know he was talking about canning I was talking about canning and we just went back and forth and it's been history ever since so I really appreciate your friendship ghost and I've really enjoyed the time that I've been on your panel and you've been on mine and all the other chats we've been into and I just want to thank you and wish you a happy birthday and I just hope you had an amazing day today 
It was a good day. Played with my dog. Went and got a couple more rabbits. Hung out with the family. It was a good day. Awesome. We got Virginia Roots that popped up in the stream yard. I'm going to pull her up and see what she has to say. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, come on. I'm even here without a hat on. What's up, Virginia? Uh, I wanted to say hi to Jess and thank you so much for doing this demo. I agree that we learn so much from each other when we do it together and it is motivating. It gets you going to, to get the job done. Uh -huh. um, but the reason that I'm actually here is because it is somebody's birthday. Uh -oh. Happy birthday to you. I'm not singing anymore. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear ghost. And I'm going to eat your little cupcake. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, we know it's your birthday, and I wanted to come up and do like a infiltration of a hello and happy birthday, and and hope that you get a smile out of the day. I know you got some bunnies, but girls yeah. are good too. Yeah. <laughs> Susanna, yeah. birthday. Uh huh. Happy birthday, ghost. Thank you, Susanna. Yep. So actually, ghost, um, I have to confess the girls got together to put together this surprise birthday shout out for you. Uh, and I was already going live on doing my chives. So I'm like, Hey, we can do it on my live if you want to. So this is actually a surprise birthday party for you ghost. <laughs> shenanigans going on. <laughs> yep. Hey, milkmaid. So oh. you have the floor, milkmaid. Yep, it's all you. Am I on? Yep, yeah, you're on. Oh, I thought it was. The internet is so bad. Yeah, you're oh, on. No, You've been on since you were picking your nose. We've been we've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so ghost, happy yes. birthday. Thank you. And Thanks. I made a shirt just for the occasion. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the camera went out for the internet. Went I know, right at the at the hot spot. Oh, she's got to come back. She's yeah. been working on that shirt for a few days, and it is so cool. She'll be back. She's been dying to to show you. Yeah, there, she comes. there it is. All right, see. Yes. I like it. I like it. Oh, sweet. Oh, wow. that's slick. Yep, she did that herself. <laughs> wow. I felt artistic. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome birthday. Yeah, guy. Susanna was going to do a boo shirt, but the B and the O would have been really far apart. Just y'all know, we're all really <laughs> choppy, so I can't be here. <laughs> Susanna was. That was awesome, Milkmaid. <laughs> That was awesome. You guys ready to do potatoes this week? I yep. still haven't heard back from Tribe or Native. Yep, I'm ready. Really? Yeah, Slackers. I haven't heard back from either one of them, from Tribe or Native. They might be oh. ducking us. That just means we're going to troll the crap out of them for the next week. They duck us. I'm going to troll them hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm -hmm. we're going to be ready, and it's going to be all good. I think I think that they I are afraid of the challenge. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the reason I even said potatoes is because Trump actually said that last week is that he wants to start canning and he wanted to start with potatoes because he loves potatoes. Yep. Uh, Who does potatoes make it easier because potatoes are like super easy. But I don't know. I ain't heard from him. Maybe he'll surprise us. Maybe he'll do like Dusty and just pop on there and be like, let's do it. Oh man, yeah, that was so awesome for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I'm uh I'm getting the equipment. I'm actually building the equipment because it's a lot cheaper to um, make my own shirts. I was going to do the stream yard thing and they're just, that's too much money for somebody to buy a shirt. You know what I mean? And yeah. people have been asking me about merchandise. I'm like, you know what? I'll just build the stuff and, and frame print my own shirts. It'll be like a little learning curve there, but I'll be able to sell them at like, you know, 10 bucks cheaper than, you know, the stream yard. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tiger 454 says native said he's going to try. Okay. Yeah. He said a hard maybe the last time. 
think I, I cornered him on his live stream. He said it was a hard name. But we'll see. We will see. 1776 Patriot for Life. What's going on? Thank you, brother. Happy birthday, Ghost. Thank you, Art Wild, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It's been raining all day, but it's still a free day. I was able to do a little bit in the yard, play with the rabbits, you know, all that good stuff. I could not believe how many rabbits this guy has, and he's right around the corner from me. He's got hundreds, probably 500 rabbits in the backyard. Wow. Everywhere. He raises them all for me. He sells them. He said that the price, like, he hooked me up. I only paid 20 bucks for the rabbits, which is awesome. Um, but, uh, since the whole, you know, the collapse of society in the last year, he said that the, the price and availability of meat rabbits has been just going through the roof because everybody's on the homestead now. Chicken, same way. Yeah. That's what hey, he's doing. Hey, Thanks for coming in. And baked potatoes with the skin on, Sherry. Honestly, I've never tried to can them with the skin on. I always, I always peel them. I mean, I, I don't see why you can't. I um, personally, it depends on the type of potato. Honestly, um, you're going to want to use one of your hard um, shell or one of your harder varieties of potatoes. I do canned potatoes with the skin on, but it needs to be either your um, Idaho potato or the Yukon Gold or something like that. Yeah, I use the Idaho. They hold together really good for me, and they make awesome mashed potatoes. I've never had an issue with them. Oh, yeah. yeah, so if you guys are doing the potatoes, make sure you got them, you know, peeled and ready when we start, I guess. Um, like, if you're doing like, like, I'm doing like 10 pounds, so I'll just peel them all and dice them up, and I'll put them in the water with some citrus acid to keep them from turning brown, just let them soak. Plus, it gets a lot of the starch out. Yeah. You don't have to be sorry, milkmaid. I'm sorry that you got popped off. Her internet keeps going in and out, and I know you really wanted to be up here and talk to ghosts, so I'm sorry. It's not working out. Yeah, she's been a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Moonchild. Hello, Moonchild. Ark Wild Man, I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for coming up for the birthday card, the, the virtual I, birthday card. I just woke up and I, I seen Keto was live and uh, I hadn't even checked my emails. <laughs> yeah, I was frantically emailing as many people as I could find in the last half an hour. It was something else. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I was being a ghost down in there, just waiting. Yeah. Yep. Susanna yeah. was waiting in the wings, and she, I had her on the phone. All right, girl, jump in. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, don't make ghost in us. <laughs> you know, she made that shirt. She she did that herself. She's been sending me pictures of the progress, and she worked hard on that for a couple of days. And honestly, I think it's a pretty cool merch type of shirt the the boo with the the mm -hmm. ghost on the back maybe oh, yeah, i really yeah. like it right yeah, it's, talented. it's beautiful it has colors the skull actually has a little bit of color work and and she did an awesome job she did hey that, happy. Was, that was just like a, a a joke one night when i went to the chat i just decided to just pipe in boo and it's kind of stuck <laughs> so it works yeah it does it's perfect Emily, can you hear us? She's messaging me and saying that um, she's trying to talk and nobody can hear her. Can hear a thing now. Yeah. She's muted now. Yeah, she's muted now. She says it's storming pretty bad where she is. So okay. Maybe that's what it is. Is that Emily Yale? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've had that happen to me before where I. I couldn't tell where my audio and video was based on the screen. So Emily, we, we cannot hear you, but yeah, the storming is bad out there. I hear. Um, it's to get bad here. Like it, it looks horrible. The sky is black. It's rumbling near the thunder and then it'll rain like seven drops. And then the, <laughs> and the sun comes out. It's like the end of the world is coming. And it, it'll like rain for like 30 seconds and the sun comes out. Seven big raindrops. Um, so like, Jeff, I'm curious with the chives, did you were you putting them in was that a dehydrator or I was distracted when you were putting it together? Yeah. yeah. 
It's a dehydrator. And um, the one I have, I got from Walmart. It's just a cheapo one. But the reason I like this one, I have two. This one goes all the way down to 95. So most herbs need to be at the lowest setting as you can get. So that's why I use this one just specifically for herbs. Right. And then I have another one. It's um, a white one and it's a round one. Now that one I will use for like my meats and other things that I do. Yeah, because you don't want the flavor. The herbs will affect the dehydrator, right? It'll make it kind of taste different. It will, it, it yeah. will, depending on what herb you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Good night, Johnny. Mi amor. Good night. So then after that, do you store them in jars? Like Yeah. I, I put them in mason jars. Um, just like I said, you want to really make sure that they are completely dried out so they don't go rancid and uh, mildew or mold or anything like that. So right. then also, where is it? Um, once they are dried out, I don't know if anybody else knows this trick or not, but if you use Parmesan cheese, oh. you can take the cap off and it fits right onto a mason jar. Oh. So that's how I store all of my herbs. Yeah. Cool. That's a good idea. That's so smart. So this is what my chives will go into when they are done. And you can do any kind of herb as long as it's fully dried? Yes. Like anything you dehydrate, you want to make sure it's completely dried. Okay. I've got a brand new dehydrator in the basement. I've never used it. I've had it for like six months. I do love me some ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like bananas and things like that. Bananas. I, mean, I like a bunch of peaches, any applesauce and stuff. But I definitely want to do bananas. Yeah. And maybe mushrooms. Maybe deer jerky. Yes, yeah. the deer jerky is amazing. I love the bananas too, but ke uh, bananas aren't keto anymore. And I would dehydrate b bananas. Um, now, bananas is a good um, example because if you want those chewy bananas, you know, you wouldn't leave them in as long as the dehydrator would call for it. Now, if you want to make dehy um, dehydrated banana chips, then you would leave it longer until they get completely hard. But those chewy bananas, before I was keto, I used to dehydrate those all the time, and I would just eat those until I'd get sick. They were so good. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's one thing I haven't done yet is dehydrating or doing some of the herbs like you're doing. I messed up on some uh, sage. I had grown it, and I thought I dried it out on, on a paper towel. I left it out for like a month, but it ended up molding when I put it in a mason jar. Um, so I'm thinking maybe that green lid too from the cheese that that would help for the air because I sealed it up and it did me no favors. Wow. Yeah, it might be the humidity too that could be affecting it. That's a big mm. issue. Yeah. Leslie, Leslie, those are your seed pods for your potatoes. They look like tomatoes, but they're not. They're actually where the seeds grow for the potato plant. You can actually look up some videos on YouTube and it shows you how to save your own potato seeds grow your plants from seeds instead of using actual seed potatoes but those are the seed pods wow that's really cool leslie it'd be awesome to to see them somehow if you could show it sometime i don't have any of those on mine it is a pain in the butt i've watched a couple of videos of people doing it and i'm like oh my god you gotta go through all that to get a, a potato seed right i always where do potatoes come from everybody grows it from seed potatoes is there actually a potato seed and there really is it grows at the top of the potato plant and it looks like a tomato Huh. You know, I was um, just researching yesterday and last night about um, harvesting seeds and stuff. So, you, you know, you can save your own seeds and everything. And I had planted onions this year and I planted from seed. This year was the first time I ever planted everything in the house as starts. So it was a real huge learning curve. The onion seeds that I started completely died. I lost every single one of them. Right. And so I was like, well, what am I going to do? It's, you know, getting late in the season. So I just went to my local um, 
greenhouse and got seed potatoes and planted those. Well, the reason I started searching this last night is because some people, when they grow onions, they either bend the tops down or they cut them. Oh. So I was trying to figure out how to do this and how to make my onions bigger. Well, once I got into that, I got in this rabbit hole, you know, and they were talking <laughs> about how you should grow all your onions from seeds because the sets aren't actually um, meant to grow huge onions. They are like onions um, that were tossed to the side that weren't big enough and they yep. store them for a year and then they sell them as sets. And then when you go to put them in the ground, they basically go to seed. Huh. So I'm like reading this and watching these videos last night all bummed out. I'm like, no. <laughs> no I already got okay. onions about that, about that big around. Wow. Oh, wow. Did you have seed? Got into my garden yeah. last night destroyed the celery and my onions oh, no. yeah. now did you grow yours from seed or uh, from the plants okay so, man, I'm, gonna do a, I'm gonna do an update video on the garden tomorrow i was gonna do it today but i figured i'd wait y'all will not believe the size of that squash the one that i fertilized with the rabbit manure right it's massive it it, it looks it is, it is at least four to five times bigger than the other two plants. And they were seeded at the same time in the same pot, you know, the whole nine yards. They germinated at the same time. And the one in the rabbit manure is literally four times the size of the other two. It's crazy. That's good fertilizer. Oh, yeah. It's Evident. Yeah, it's been raining here in Ohio for like the last three days and I've been wanting to get out there to fertilize everything and I just haven't been able to because it's just been pouring down. It's raining out there too. A five gallon bucket and I'm going to put it probably a third, maybe a quarter or a third of the way full of uh, rabbit manure and then I'm going to fill it up with water and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna blend it up real good, mash it up real good and make some rabbit manure tea and that's what I'm going to water some of the plants with. That's what I usually do, Ghost. Um, I let it set for a couple of days and keep stirring it every once in a while. But I'll warn you, you might want to wear some nose plugs or something. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, a really good smell. <laughs> the size of that, that dead gum squash plant compared to the other ones. And, and like the video I did, I got one container of squash. And it had three plants in it. Because I'll, I'll pick and choose when I buy the plants every now and then you get lucky. And you're only buying one, but sometimes you get two. I found the squash had three of them in there. So I painstakingly separated all those roots and I planted all three of them at the same time. And one of them is just, it, it looks like it's a month older than the other two. It's huge. They all look good, but the one with the rabbit manure is just all sterile. It's just crazy. Uh, so moon phase is asking, so onion seeds are from the first year then. Yeah, that's what I'm understanding. So we'll see. Hopefully I'll still get some more onions, but I don't know. We're supposed to dig potatoes sometime this coming week. And it just My potato. My potatoes still have not flowered yet. They're just growing. I literally, I've tied them up twice. Yeah. Because they grew out of the container and just laying over onto the ground. I'm like, no, and I got them tied up twice. These, these big, massive potato leaves. I ain't got one single flower yet. And I, I was always told if you're making flowers, you're making potatoes. I mean, these things have been in the dirt for going on two and a half months now. Yeah. The milkmaid saying that you can still grow onions from sets. You just got to trim their hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, I've got a bunch of onions out in my area. And what happens every year is they'll put off these big, huge, beautiful white blooms that have a ton of little white flowers on them at the top. And what will happen is those will turn into the, the little black seeds that you would that's the actual onion seed that comes out of that flower so um if you get a chive or something that does that flower it should go to seed and then you can plant that and it's not the same as planting from a set yeah that's what i think i'm gonna do i'm just gonna leave a couple of the onions in the ground 
and let them go to seed and then I'll just collect that for next year. Yep. Yeah, I was, I'm I'm waiting on the oh, sorry, ghost. Uh, about the flowering, does anyone in the chat know or Ark Wild or anybody, does it have to flower? Because mine have not flowered either and I heard the same thing. Oh, yeah, nice. have to flower to what do you mean? To produce the seed or? To produce uh, potatoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because at the I've top of the always heard that they do. You I'm do? Grow, I'm going to grow until they die off. And, and I'll stop watering them and I'll wait for two weeks and I'm going to flip them and see what happens. Yeah. That's my first time growing potatoes, so. Yeah, that's my plan too. And I've got potatoes that are the same age as yours from the first week of April. Then I have uh, more buckets about a month apart so that I can figure out in my area which start time, whether April, May, or June, and may, I might even start one in July, why not? And see which one actually does the better yield. Um, Cause I've never done it before either. I have no idea. Yeah. That's love those funny, little... Sorry, Art, go ahead. I love those little baby potatoes uh, boiled and with a jacket on and mash them up with some butter and salt. <laughs> It's not keto, I know, but <laughs> yeah. all right. I do the same thing with radishes. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh yeah. So radishes, do they taste different when you cook them? Yes, it takes all the spiciness out. Yeah. Um, I really like the radishes cooked. I won't eat a raw radish. I don't like spicy at all. So I used to eat raw radishes like an apple when I was a kid. I used to love those things. I know raw a lot of people do. I used to love raw cabbage. A little salt on some raw cabbage. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is. I used to pop radishes like they were cherries when I was a kid, and it just never occurred to me they were spicy. <laughs> I'm excited for these uh, tomato plants because I've got the big zacks, the beef steaks, and the Cherokee purple. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to intentionally cross pollinate the big back with the Cherokee purple and try to get a massive Cherokee purple tomato. I, I, love to, it. I just want to get me a, a two or three pound uh, big Zach. I mean, I've seen one of them. I've seen on the internet. I think the world record is like it's almost five pounds. One potato, wow. one tomato, five pounds. I think it's wow. massive. It looks like a watermelon. Hmm. Like it's huge. Cherokee's my favorite tomato. I love it. Yeah. Nothing's better than Cherokee purple. That that's the best tomato there is. Period. Really? Because I, I have one. I have one that I'm trying to grow, and and then I have a another one. I don't know what it is. A black something or other. Are the ugliest tomato you will ever look at, and they're the best tasting tomato you will ever eat. They're, when you cut them open, they look they look rotten, but they're delicious. They're so good. <laughs> Hey, Gardner, State Gardener. Hello, Debbie. I saw you come in. Hello, girl. Hey, Debbie. Sorry. We're just chatting away. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I love about this community, though, because, like, I honestly um, don't know a lot about the garden, even though I've been growing a garden for 10 years. I've never, like, dug into seed saving or, you know, wondered why this grows this way or whatever. Now that I'm getting older, I'm like really intrigued in learning and all these different channels and my friends here and family is like awesome because if I don't know somebody, there's always somebody out here that I can reach out to. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I'm, I'm not a, a homesteader in that I don't have a huge piece of land to work with. I can't do huge long rows but there's still the similarities in growing that we all have doing with the same things and to learn how each other does it in the different grow zones and also how do you save your your seeds where do you dry them where do you store them all right. of that stuff i think people are really into because i think a lot of us do not save our seeds I, a lot of us perhaps either start over or go with starts again but we don't really save what we did grow so right and it's it's a lot. It's really overwhelming. Like, I don't care who you are gardening and seed saving and everything you have to do is just overwhelming. And there's just so much knowledge to learn. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny how seeds do. I mean, I told you guys uh, about two months ago, I had a, 
my first, uh, I bought a uh, Cherokee purple from a, a roadside vegetable stand. It was delicious. Oh. And um, it was massive. It, it was a big ass tomato. And I had, um, I was using it. I just cut off a slice, and make a sandwich. I mean, one slice made an entire sandwich. But it was in the, it was really ripe when I got it. So it was in the fridge for approaching a week. And I pulled it out. It was in the Ziploc bag. And I pulled it out. And like eight or ten of the seeds in the tomato had already germinated. They literally germinated in the refrigerator while they were still in the tomato. I'm like, man, I should just cut a slice and plant it. Yeah, that's cool. I've had that happen to me with uh, peppers, bell peppers. I've cut open bell peppers to sprouted seeds so many times. The milkmaids in the chat saying nerds unite, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the nerd support group. Where <laughs> <laughs> some call preppers, some call homesteaders, some are gardeners. We'll just call it the nerders support group. Hey, Ginger Ninja. Ginger Ninja. Hi, Ginger. Good to see you. Yeah, Ginger. Hi, Ninja. Oh, Ninja. Hi. Ginger. Sorry, Susanna. That's okay. <laughs> Virginia, you look completely different without the sunglasses and the hat. Yeah, she yeah. does. I'm like <laughs> staring at her like. like. I hope that's a good thing. I don't know. I I wear the hat so that I can I can scope the chat and people can't see the reflection on my glasses. <laughs> so, <idea>. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually incognito, but it's a special day. You get the hat off, no hair down, not that special, but hey, Brenda. Uh, it's a start. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moonface says there's something strange, um, something infecting many plants in our immediate area, garden plants and weeds alike. Ugh. What is the symptom, Moonface? Is there, do you have like a fuzzy mold? Do you have something eating your plants? I've, I've got something eating my cabbage, beans, zucchini, um, and I think there's deers coming into my yard and annihilating other stuff late at night. Um, I'm just I, glad my, uh, my rear neighbor raises hunting dogs. <laughs> kind of keeps the, the they, they, they won't come near those hunting dogs, the deer dogs. Now I can go 100 yards down the street and I can watch deer jump the creek, but they don't come in my backyard because they, they literally have to walk within 50 yards of those hunting dogs and they don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Lady Hammer um, says, I don't know how to save seed yet. Maybe we could do a video on it. Actually, I have turnips. I grow turnips every year, not only for us, but for my hogs. I like to grow turnips for hogs because they're so fast producing. And I left uh, about four turnips in the ground last year and they went to seed and they actually have the seed pod on them right now. I'm just waiting for them to dry out so I can start collecting them. I'm super excited because I didn't know that's how turnips got mm -hmm. seeds was from seed pods. I was like, awesome. Mm -hmm. so that was exciting for me to learn this year. <laughs> you know, the, you know this, go ahead. No, I, was gonna, I was just gonna say it, it brings me back to when, you know, I was younger and my grandma used to grow you know, a big garden. And um, I would, and I would see, you know, different flowers and uh, vegetables, all kinds of things. And she would let certain things go to seed. And I remember picking them sometimes and taking them in the house and, you know, like, Grandma, what is this? And I'd be all excited and she would just laugh. And, you know, that's, she'd tell me what it was. And, you know, I didn't, I was pretty young at the time, but it was, it, it's interesting to look back at those days, you know, and. <laughs> yeah, um, Teresa Ellis keeps asking about um, drying lavender. I would do the same process as I did in the um, dehydrator with the chives and do the same thing with the lavender. I don't know. There's a lot of different ways um, you can do anything, but that's how I would personally do it. Art, do you have any knowledge on dehydrate and lavender or drying it? You could just uh, tie it up and dry it that way, too. Don't mm -hmm. forget to pickle some of those uh, daylilies, though. Yum. You see yeah, how that color is? Mm -hmm. That is the prettiest color. Yeah, it is. 
those are beautiful wild man i i watched that when you did that it's so cool and yeah. it was awesome to see you in an apron by the way <laughs> <laughs> i love it. that thing that that um what did you call that i can't remember what you called it boa a boa Man, yeah that was boa. awesome i love that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was hey klingon i do have an apron somewhere though <laughs> yeah it was really cool um my strawberries you guys i don't know if you've seen my poison hemlock and strawberry video but my strawberries were doing so awesome and like i said it's been raining I went and checked them yesterday and they were just about to turn all the way red. And I went out today to go pick them completely wiped out. I don't know if it were the deers or the deer or the rabbits. I'm like, no. Yeah. So, I planted 14 corn seedlings that had popped up. And the next day there was trample foot marks and um, eight out of 14 of them were completely annihilated. Um, the deer here where i am are very they're almost domesticated they're because it's a small place so they're used to people so i have families of deer that walk around my yard my backyard all over my garden my son can walk all the way up to them and the deer will not leave it's it's wow. actually it's pretty scary to be honest because you know he's four so um but yeah i'm pretty sure they come in they eat rose hips uh rose hops Oh yeah, the hips People have roses, and and they love that little sweet red ball that at the uh, end of the rose. But also, a lot of people don't know that those rose hops or rose hips they're really really high in vitamin C. They have more mm -hmm. vitamin C than almost anything, and they are edible. Yeah. Um, I just want to address, we got a couple people popping in. S. More, hello. <laughs> Klingon Princess, Lake Barrier, thanks for coming in. Hello and welcome. If I missed your name, I'm sorry, but hello. Hi, <laughs> Ginger. Yes. Hello, all, Lake Fairy. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, the one. Sorry, I'm so bad with names and paying attention. Um, who was it was asking about the uh, the lavender? Wants to know if it's time now to harvest and dry. I'm not that Teresa. I'm not sure. Um, it depends on where you're at and uh, what location. Like my lavender is definitely not even close to being ready. Yeah, I heard that you or I heard you think you can take a bar of soap, the Irish Spring, and you shave it onto the ground around your garden area that it keeps the deers and, and some small hornets away. Is that true? I've tried it. It's never worked for me. Human hair, it works pretty good. Like get hair from a barber shop. Oh. Very, that used to a human, it may not be effective. Right. That's a good idea. Interesting. Human hair? Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that since I was a kid. Uh, Ark Wildman, you were saying about the herbs. I, I think I heard you ask if they had gone to flower yet. I have found out with my herbs, once they start to flower, the the vegetative state stops and they don't really grow that much anymore. Um, it might depend on the type of herb as to when you would start drying that, whether before or after flower. I'm, I'm not sure, but all of them flower. Your lavender will flower. Your rosemary will flower. My uh, thyme it's flowering right now. I didn't even know time had flowers until last week. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I think the age does that's, too. that's the growing process for the potatoes as well is what I've heard is that they grow. And once they get the flowering stage, the plant itself doesn't get any bigger. All the energy goes into making the tubers. And that's why I'm like, my potatoes are growing. They're, they're growing so big. I need to stake them up like tomatoes. They're massive. Their limbs are so heavy. They're just laying over, you know, onto the ground out of the bucket. Like, oh. Right. And I don't want to get like, you know, the fungus and stuff on them. So I have to just tie them up. Mm -hmm. Laying on some flowers. I want some potatoes. 
Lady Hammer. I am doing Tincture Tuesdays every Tuesday. This past Tuesday, um, I wasn't able to do it because I had doctor appointments. But I also, for anybody in the chat, I have my schedule on my community tab. So you can look at that and see what days I'm doing what and what time. If I might address Moon Phase 5, we asked about what was going on with her plants. And Moon Phase says the leaves are turning yellow, edges are browning like they're burnt. There are spots with crispy brown edges and it's killing the plants. Uh, one thing that I do know about when leaves change color, sometimes it has to do with nutrients or the pH balance in your soil. Um, it, it might be too acidic or too alkaline for that plant. Um, as far as the browning on the edges, it if the leaf is still green and it's browning on the edges, in my experience, it has to do with just having too much light. But if they're changing color, like yellow or to orange or to whatever, that it shouldn't, it, it probably is a nutrient deficiency or a misbalance in your pH. Too much water yeah. do that too. Don't yeah, that. it will. They haven't really had much much water though in uh, Wisconsin where they're at. So I don't think that would be the issue. Okay. Yeah, it might be getting burnt. A combination of getting burnt and just um, a misbalanced soil. Different things do better in different soils. So, um, for example, the color of uh, hydrangeas, it could be purple, they could be blue, they could be pink, they could be red, and it is entirely based on the pH level of the soil. It has nothing to do with the breed of the plant at all. It's it's the acidity. Yeah, like blueberries, they love an acid soil. Yeah. Right? Depends on what kind of plant. Some plants do great in acid, some plants die. It's like like in my aquaponics system, you know, it's 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 you try to keep it as pH neutral as possible. Um, it grew everything. The only thing I could not grow in aquaponics, I probably could if I tried harder and I adjusted my, my city level a little bit more, was things like um, all of my peppers and eggplants. I had the hardest time growing peppers and eggplants um, because they're, they're like really sensitive. But now peppers and, you know, they, in the dirt, no problem. But in the aquaponics, it was just crazy because the nutrient level was so high. I mean, if, if I was just growing one type of plant, it'd be fine to dial it in. But if I'm doing like tomatoes and you know, beans and celery and all these different, you know, uh, uh, collards. You know, if you're doing leafy greens versus fruiting plants, there's a whole different world of how much fish you got to feed the fish to raise the nutrient level because the fruiting plants need more juice when they're making fruit. But the leafy greens, they're happy just staying a constant. So it was really good. It was a huge learning curve. Yeah, there is. Wild man, do all berries prefer acidic soil? Most of them do. Don't, don't most of your fruiting plants do decent in, in acidic soil? Like tomatoes, all your berries, things like that. Don't they all do pretty decent in, in acidic soil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so for like, I grow blueberries and they do pretty good every year. And my soil isn't very acidic because we have a spring and a creek that runs through my property. So it washes out all the nutrients out of the ground a lot of the time. But I do have spruce and pine trees on my property. So what I do is I'll cut those spruce and pine um, branches and I'll lay that around my, the base of my blueberries. And they just thrive off of it. Oh, they how love those dead leaves too on the pine. What was that, Ark? They love to be mulched with the dead pine needles. Yeah. Berries. Huh. I did not know that. I've got pine needles for days. Yeah. Super <laughs> interesting. So if you want to acidify your soil, you can surround the plant or the area with pine needles. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I don't know everything, but I don't like to buy anything that I don't need to. If I can find it off the earth to help, you know, growth with 
other stuff or pesticides, you know, I don't like to use pesticides in the garden. If I can find something natural to use, that's where I'm going to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the pine needles and pine branches came from. Right. Doing a lot of research. We have a lot of that here too. <laughs> yeah. And then Sarah, um, if you guys don't know Sarah at the Big Blue House Homestead, she is like a huge garden guru. She knows so much about gardening, it's ridiculous. And she is basically my one of my go-tos for gardening if I have any issues at all. And this year, I'm um, Dylan, I planted like, I don't know, 22 cabbage heads or something like that. Right. And I don't know if they're actually aphids. I've tried to research it. I can't figure it out. But they're little black, um, not seeds, but eggs on the inside of the cabbage. Oh, and they like, I know it's a white moth, but when I try to research the eggs, nothing will pop up for me. And so I've been having a hard time getting rid of them. And I contacted her and she suggested to put a couple um, drops of dish soap, not your name brand dish soap, because they have a lot more toxins in them and stuff, but like your Ajax or your, um, lower end dish soaps you can use those put it in your water bottle um, and add some water to it and i've been doing that every time it breaks in the rain i'll run out there real quick and spray it and i haven't had holes in my plants or any i haven't seen those little nasty eggs anymore so it's working okay there is a cabbage, uh, huh there is a cabbage moth i can't think of the name of it right now Oh, that, uh, dish, dish soap and water, and then also use uh, the, the cold pressed neem oil, or I'll use uh, pepper juice. Yeah, well, that Thanks. neem oil, that neem oil is pretty expensive, so I've stayed away from that. Um, and I've thought about doing the pepper, like you said, um, but I was also worried if it would scorch the leaves or anything. Right, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Oh, like the Nemo is kind of expensive, but you, you don't really have to use that much. It goes a pretty long way. Okay. Tobacco I, juice helps too in a lot of it. You read my mind, Ark Wild Man. Uh, another mutual friend of ours in the community told me to use tobacco. He said, uh, kind of break it apart and you might could put it in a squirt bottle or whatever all around um, different plants for, for different kind of pests and, and even kind of for um, natural like uh, funguses or whatever. He said tobacco, which I've never heard of before, but you just triangulated that. So that's interesting. To this day, the best thing I've ever saw to, that I actually used for aphids because I had a big problem with aphids in the aquaponics was if you're planting in a container or anything that's up off the ground that has a rim or sides that you if you can keep the entire plant from touching the ground, it works. With Vaseline, I coat the yeah. edge, the rim of the container, or the, anywhere on the bucket all the way around, just make an impenetrable barrier, and it keeps the ants from getting in there. Because the ants are the ones that harvest. They, they're the ones that put the, the, the aphids to work. And, and like in my aquaponics, as long as I keep the ants out, I didn't have a problem with aphids. If I went one day and let the ants get in there and they set up, they set up shop, it was, within two days, I had aphids everywhere. Wow. I saw that trick with fruit trees. Uh, I have apples and cherries and I, of course, so I watch videos on apple and cherry trees. And a gentleman said the same thing. He said to put Vaseline along the branch that is getting infected with the aphids and it'll stop them in their tracks. So I, I'll give that a whirl if I have it again. Yeah, Vaseline's awesome. Plus it lasts through the rain. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's cool, you know, it, it doesn't get washed away like, you know, a lot of people do the diatomaceous earth and things like that. It works great until it rains, you know. Right. But uh, the, the, the Vaseline, it, it, I mean, it, it's good for at least a month. Yeah, that's a good point. S. Moore is saying spray the bugs in the evening so it can absorb and not burn the plants. Yeah, people yeah. need to realize that too, not to spray it around the middle of the day. Or You don't even want to water your plants in the heat of the day either. <laughs> Right. I always water my plants first the early in the morning before the sun comes up. I'll, I'll give them a drink because I got that nice cool water all day. I try not to water them late at night. 
I always try to just do it early in the morning, real early in the morning, and I get the best results that way. Lady Hammer says she tried to put cayenne pepper in her water, but it stops up the water spray bottle. Any suggestions, you guys? Blender. Put that stuff in the blender. Blend it up. Liquefy it. You can also boil it, too, a little bit and get the juice. Yeah. Welcome back, Donnie Angel. But if you just get like some some uh, some uh, cayenne peppers or some habanero peppers, if you get all some ghost peppers and throw those bad boys in a blend and just pour five them with water and a little bit of dishwashing soap so it'll stick and spray it, you're good. I mean, it'll keep everything off. It'll keep the deer off. It'll keep, it'll keep your neighbors off. I mean, that stuff. You, know, <laughs> you better take the blender onto the porch if you're going to do something with ghost peppers. Don't, don't put in your house. You won't be able to live there for a week. Right. Don't rub your eyes and don't scratch anything. Oh, whether, yeah, it's ghost, whether it's ghost peppers or not. <laughs> I love the eye protection and a respirator. You don't want to breathe that stuff when you're blending it up. It will keep on the butt. Open your sinuses for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have one of the old school coffee grinders. And I found out a yard sale. And I did cayenne pepper one year in the house. I thought I was going to die. And then I washed it out really good. And then I realized no matter what else I put in there, it was so hot and spicy. I was like, never again. I went back out yard selling to find a second one. So that one is designated for peppers only. And that's it. <laughs> that is so funny. People use those coffee grinders for herbs also. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, princess thank you very much well that's what i was doing virginia i was doing the peppers and then like i said i washed it let it dry and then went to do an herb and chopped it up and tasted it i'm like oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt Susanna, do you grow any herbs girl no i used to i used to grow a lot of herbs and stuff but I haven't for a couple of years. What was your favorite to grow? Probably the lavender. Oh. I used to grow it outside in my city home on the, um, because it, well, I, I used to uh, do the thing, you know, where your yard is kind of your garden. Right. But I didn't do a whole lot of uh, vegetables or anything. That's what I'm trying to get into um, pretty soon here, trying to do that part of it. Because I always used to, I always did herbs and I just wanted to do something different. Um, yeah. Hello, Stuart. Welcome. And Sandra Moon hey. welcome. I've never, heard, I've never heard of that. Sarah at the Big Blue House Homestead just popped in. She was the one I was talking about that was the um, garden guru, if anybody wants to check her out. Excellent. Uh, Sarah, if you want, you can drop your link. Good to see you, Stuart and Sandra. Awesome. Has anybody heard of that, what Stuart's talking about? The last no. I don't know what he's talking about. He's talking, well, neem. You can get it as an oil. Yeah, um, but uh, I don't know anything about separating the way. I I haven't heard about that. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna use neem oil, don't just get neem oil. You got to get the 100% cold pressed neem oil. Oh, okay. There, that's what he's saying. Okay, I had to read it like three times to understand. Separating whey from raw milk. Right? That's what I'm understanding would be a good substitute for neem. I don't know. I've never heard that, but that would that's interesting. I'll look into that for sure. Hey Za, how are you doing? Za's here. Hello. Hey Za. I'm always so scared to say that name. I'm gonna pronounce it <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I got two more rabbits to keep Za company today. Fuzzy Fork, hello. Hey, Sunny. 
I'm sorry, it's more my, my phone's dead, so I'm having to use my laptop and the mic on here doesn't go very loud. I'll lean in better. Is this where all the cool kids hang out? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> hey, Fuzz. Cool. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Not that it actually has a really good my birthday, uh, point. My birthday cupcake. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had I, I put some thought into this. Um, Milkmaid has a good idea. She's confirming what Stuart said, um, huh. and it makes sense. So the curd is is going to be the the fattier part, and then what you're left, the whey is just kind of like the water uh -huh. that's left over. So is that what he's saying? Is to kind of spray the the whey? Yeah, that's what he's saying. I don't know if it works or not, though. Like I've never heard of anybody doing it before. Huh. Sounds like a, sounds like the materials makings of a great video. Yes. <laughs> yes, it say, does. We have to have milkmaid try that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then Definitely. she can take the curds and make cheese. Mm -hmm. Or, or she's supposed to be making some um, uh, some kefir milk. Uh, we oh, were talking yeah. about kefir milk a couple of weeks ago. I, uh, when my cows are in milk, I always make kefir milk. So I explained the process to her. So I told her, I want to see your video. <laughs> make a video. <laughs> I made a milk beer one time and it was stout. Was oh. it? Uh, I bet. That's some dangerous stuff right there from what I've heard. I've never had any, but I've heard it. So, Ooh. Yeah. My brother-in-law took one drink and he said it ain't that bad but he fell off my doorstep <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny that hey is. brenda hi brenda Hello, so are brenda. you saying you actually processed milk into a stout to make alcohol yeah the the arabs used to make a a strong beer from mare's milk over there in uh, Saudi Arabia. I have no idea. Process <laughs> milk and all this stuff. Yeah. Oh, Klingon princess that says her kefir grains died. She needs some more. Oh, girl. What's your favorite uh, bag bomb or utter cream milk made? Do you use it on your goats at all, Ark? Uh, well, sometimes use bag balm, and that's yeah. what I use on the milk cow. And that's what I use too, is the bag balm. Also good on your lips too when you get chapped lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom, um, I'm the oldest of six kids, and my mother breastfed all of us, and she used bag balm on her nipples. <laughs> like, we had bag bomb in the house all the time. They like back in the day, they used it for everything, you know, diaper rash, everything. Mm -hmm. or, yep. I won't tell you what I found my 15 year old son doing with the bag bomb, but we all, we all have a match. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Keeps that from getting chipped too, I guess. <laughs> Dangerous chips after dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll I'll leave it there. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a birthday. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope it put a smile on your face. Yeah, might be I couldn't have seen it for all the fur, but I was grinning my cheeks for being so <laughs> I thought I saw your face getting a little pink there for a minute. Yeah. We all love you, ghost. <laughs> Happy twentieth birthday! Yeah, right. right. He's Twenty not even legal yet. Twenty times two plus two. <laughs> well, that's funny. All right, I'm gonna jump off. I've got it's about my dinner time here. I'm I'm uh six o'clock as opposed to most of you, but um, Ghost, I hope you have a lovely day. I'm probably will see you later. And Jess, thank you so much for giving us a a table to have this picnic. Our You're wild man, thank you so much for popping on. And Susanna, girl, thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Virginia, I will see you later. Okay, I'll check you all later. Bye, Virginia. Uh, Thanks, Thanks, uh, have a great day.
Thank you, so, Canada. Uh, Thank you, God. Sorry. That's a yellow light. So, uh, Ghost, um, the girls should be acknowledged because they're the ones that worked so hard to put this together. And it was the Milkmaid and uh, Virginia Roots and Susanna. And I'm not sure who else. If I've missed you, I'm sorry. But they were the ones that concocted this plan and put everything together. So, shout out, shout out to all of them. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> shout out to the cannibals. <laughs> so, but yeah i think um, i'm gonna go ahead and get off here and let everybody do their thing too it's nine o'clock we've been on here about an hour so i gotta get right. supper done here and uh i just want to wish you a really happy birthday ghost thank you thanks for having me thank you everybody thank you Susanna, jess milkmaid emily virginia everybody Arc Wild Man and everybody in the chat, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Very yeah. Thank you for everybody that came out to wish Ghost a happy birthday. Everybody in the chat, thanks for coming in. Everybody on the panel that came in to make this happen, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. I hope you all stay happy, healthy, and safe, and we will see you next time. Love you all. Bye. Love Bye you. All.